Hi guys, so I'm going to show you how to make my most complex and deep stat list that I've done. Or at least the stat list, the fast fall falling speed list to 0.5% accuracy. This list took me over 200 hours to make. So I showed you the basics of how I test tested quick frames. Now I'm going to show you how I did one of my more complex stat lists. This one actually gets semi-ridiculous, depending on what you call it. You notice I'm on slow-mo melee and I find it much easier to test there. So basically, to first explain, Fox's laser, when I start the laser, the first frame of laser, this is like a frame 11 or so, but the first frame of laser is actually frame 12. Then it goes by multiples of 10, so it's first, first laser, frame 12, then 22, 32, and so on. So I'd basically make a chart real quick. I'd stand at the top of the pipe, and I'd do like this. So I actually got that frame perfect by luck that time, or skill, I don't know. Um, th this is actually frame 12, or a multiple of two. So this is frame 12, and if I keep pressing B, it's frame 12, 22, 32, 42, etc. And then I pretty much have a list of each laser, for example. I'll try this. Nope. Okay. I actually got that perfectly there. This is the second frame of laser. And this is multiples of three, so uh, I, I, so all I have to do is um, make a list measured from the top of the pipe using this as a, a marker point, and I'd see how how far the laser goes, and then I'd see what what frame I'm on. But what am I talking about really? Well, the fast fall falling speed list. The only way to do this, in my opinion. I set it up here, so if all I have to do is hold down on the control stick, and then die. And then with Fox, I'm pressing B uh, to rapid laser. But then I have to release the B button, and then press B again. So the easiest way to do this is to actually take my foot and hold down on the control stick. Oops. Let me switch. Okay. I would actually hold B with this, and then I would hold down on the controller with, like this. But I messed that up, so let me do it again. After, when you mess up, you have to redo the process. But once you get in the correct mindset, it's just, oh, it's just the same thing over and over. So let me try again. So that was an attempt at getting a frame-perfect pause. Yes, you have to get a frame-perfect pause there, unless you want to do other methods, such as... Looking at the length of l where the laser goes relative to other stuff, which is another, is another method. But I missed the frame perfect pause, so I shot three lasers. And I'm going to show the chart in the description below of the laser lengths of what frame it's on. So this was uh, frame... That's frame 33 and Falco's still not dead. So I know that Falco dies at least on four, 34 or later. But in order to test that for sure, you have to keep doing this over and over. Oh yeah, and every single time I respawn, I have to down smash this, grab leads, fast fall again, and then do the pro same exact process over. So I tried it again. Hmm, that wasn't quite perfect, as you can see by the green there. So, so I'd pretty much record that, I'd take a note of that, like, of where the green is and where the laser is. But... So just to be confident, I would keep doing the test over and over and over until I got the exact right number. So I'd have to keep doing this test over and over until I happened to get lucky enough to pause at the exact same time. So I pretty much do this over and over. Okay, that was almost it. Falco's still alive there, and that laser is on multiples of four, so I, I call it X4. So what actually happens is he dies on frame 35. But let me just show an example. And yes, this is what I literally spent like two weeks of my time, or weeks of my time, doing this over and over. This is just a small taste of what the stuff I used to do. Like a very small taste. Okay, I got it finally that time. That was a frame perfect pause. Now, th that laser, if, uh, if you look at the chart below in the YouTube description, you'll see that that is the multiple of five. So I shot three lasers, so that's three. And that's multiples of five, five, 35. That, that green, where it's right above the, uh, the blocks and even with or just, just above the lasers too, 
That That is the first death frame. So guess what that means? That means Falco dies on frame 35. But what does that really mean? That actually means, if you consider real time uh, or if, and uh, the game, he really died somewhere between 34.0000001 and 35.0. If you actually think about it, let's say he moves 100 pixels per frame. Let's say he only needed to move one more pixel to die between frame 34 and 35. That means it's actually much closer to 34 than 35. Yes, he died on 35, but maybe that was overkill. Maybe he only needed to move this much instead of this much to die. So that's that's pretty much the logic there that I thought up when I was just a little kid. I was I was brainstorming. I'm like, how can I get this accurately? Well, I, you can't get it exactly accurate, but you can get it within a range. So I do the exact same test with Falco as Mario. Falco here dies on 35, which means he really died between 34 point a million zero 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 uh, ones. So let's just say between 34 to 35. Mario dies on 30, 53, which really means he died between 52 to 53. So what you do is you take the two inner numbers, uh, the two inner numbers and the two outer numbers, and divide them. If you take the inner numbers and outer numbers and divide them, uh, you get the range. You get point zero point six four one five and zero point six seven three zero. So now you know that it's within that range. It's summer, uh, Mario Fastfall is somewhere between 60, uh, 64.15% and 67.30%. And that, that's not that big of a range. That's, that, that's, you you kind of narrowed it down, but not really. In order to get even more complex, you do the same test as you, I just did on Tiny Melee. Because that you have even more data, and I think, I think it scales the exact same. You have even more data when you go in Tiny Melee, and I've also tested other stages and done cross-testing. And I pretty much do this over and over and over until I get it perfect. And I'd also ma I also made a personal rule to myself to double-check everything that I did. So now that I got that, a frame-perfect pause, just to make sure that I was exactly right, I would redo the exact test just in case there's a 1% ch ch chance that I somehow made a human error. And that's pretty much how I made the fast fall falling speed list to 0.5% accuracy. If you actually look on my website, it's uh, my final conclusion was he's around 66.5%. So that means my test determined that it was between 66 to 67%. I don't have the full chart because these are on 14 year old papers, but I, I, wrote, I wrote some basic stuff down here to, just to quickly remind myself. So you take the laser length because each laser is distinctly different. For example, the uh, X2, X3, and X4, those lasers would be before it reaches the, the yellow block. And then each laser would be distinctly different. Like X6 would be in the exact middle, if not very slightly more, f according to the three yellow blocks. So they would all, so the, the, since the lasers are distinctly different, you can really tell which number you're on. And I just, it just happened to be a lucky coincidence that Fox's multi-laser works in multiples of 12. For example, the first laser is 12, and then it's 22, 32, 42, etc. That made it. That made it. This doing this easier for me. That had happened to be in multi. Uh, that happened to work every other 10 frames. So uh, he shoots six in a second, besides the first one, which made the test easier than it would have been that if it was nine frames apart or whatever. There's other things I used to do. For example. As a backup plan, in case foxes weren't working, I would use rapid fox uh, dodges. Now, so, some, some, something many people don't know, if you do rapid dodges like this, no, if you do rapid dodges like this, and you're within like a three or four frame window or something, I don't know the number, then you see how no shield is coming up? That's because I'm timing it by pressing down a few frames before the move completes. I just press down just before the move completes, and no shield comes up. But you can see, if I was to shield, and use down the C stick, watch, or the R button, you notice that the shield pops up one frame. Look at Fox. You see that when I use the C stick, there's a shield frame. And I can use I can use tests like that, and I can use Falco's lasers, which are a little different than Fox's. Most of these tests, I simply use Fox's lasers to test out everything. But sometimes I use things like multiple spot dodges, multiple rolls. If I was at certain multiples, see how there's a shield frame every time? Very, very tiny, rare cases, I might need things like Falco's lasers, certain spot dodges, or certain rolls. But for most tests, all I needed was Fox's, mult was Fox's laser, since every length of the laser and animation of Fox was distinctly different from each other. You can also zoom in, zoom out, 
check what everything is relative. I used to take like a piece of paper and just I take a pen and I draw the length of the laser and like Fox's animation so I could see which number I'm on exactly and I'd compare things to that. But you had to get a frame perfect pause consistently. There's more examples of why the how do I know that there's exactly like one frame of shield? Well, I've tested it in many ways, but just as random information, let's just to prove that there's like uh, how do I test like big numbers? So let's say Roy's Flare Blade. Th that move comes out, I think frame 231 is when it comes out. But testing that is really, really hard. So I could use the Fox Laser Test, which is only easy to do on slow mo melee because you can press B, you can hold the B button while you unpause it, and then release B, and then press B again to do the rapid laser. Doing that without slow-mo melee is actually much more difficult, but doing it in slow-mo melee is much easier. So doing these tests on tiny melee was a super pain. Do it, doing the slow-mo melee test, doing it in slow-mo melee is way easier than testing in tiny melee. Tiny melee was actually a nightmare. It took me f way longer. But you can do things like this. Here, I'll just show you a random example of how I got a big frame test move. So I'll start shielding, and if I press down the C-stick, th th I don't need the shield for an extra frame because there's no... Uh, I'm already in shield. So if I hold down the C stick and then hold B here, that means that the buffer spot dodge, the, the dodge starts, and then I just take the, the, the size of the dodge, which is 32 frames, and then I add the one frame of shield. So it's 32 plus one, 32 plus one, 32 plus one, over and over and over. Then you do the math, and you will actually, the one frame that shield comes up should be on the after the seventh dodge here. So by doing all this and then unpausing it, it, sh it should shield it. And that's how you know it's the exact number. And then, of course, hmm, is that, are you exactly sure that's right? Well, I'll just do, do the basic test where I, but like, I just press Z, and then, down, and then I make sure that the first frame of animation comes out, and then, you know, I now do the exact same test, but with like, one frame sooner or later, or depending if it's sooner or later, I might start it early with Zelda, or I might press the first, uh, frame frame of Roy or whatever just in case it's like one frame off But I pretty much did my stat test that way and that's just for the fastball falling speed list Keep in mind that I also use tiny melee for, uh, for just to back up check this I cross compared everything taking the outer numbers and inner numbers and I also use multiple stages like for slower characters I even used Mushroom Kingdom 1 and 2 which means I had to have three controls at the same time Meaning I also broke the blocks and then fast forward and then move like a slow falling character like Jigglypuff or Peach or something in into the pit while I'm having to make sure to hold down to not grab the ledge and making sure to do the rapid B press and then have to get a frame perfect pause while doing all that and then check the length of the laser to make sure I know what number is at and then, and then know that it's within this range. And I do that at least twice every single time for all my, for all my set tests. And that's how I did my fastball falling speed list.